Hi, today we've been on our daily walk and while we were out we were walking past our hazel tree and at the moment it is the month of May and a long time ago there used to be something called May whistles made at this time of year using hazel, sycamore or willow. We are going to be using some hazel today. You have a look at it, it's very sh smooth and shiny, sort of brown with some sort of little lentil cells on it. That's how you'd recognise it. You will need some hazel, which you've collected earlier, um, some secateurs, some gloves, and your knife or peeler will work as well. First, use your secateurs to cut a piece of hazel that is about four inches long. Um, you want to try to do it so that these budding scars here, you don't want one at the beginning, you want to have a good section that doesn't have a budding scar. So I've got a whole piece here, then the budding scar, and then another piece. So that's something to look out for when you're making your May whistle. You use your sheath knife to cut a mouthpiece. So you might need to do several cuts with this. Remember to always cut away from you, so you're looking to shape the mouthpiece. I'm going to take a look at what you've done. I'm going to give that a few more cuts. That should do it. So once you've cut your mouthpiece here, you can see that, um, you need to think about where you're going to make your next cut. So my whole whistle is this long, my budding scar is here and I want to go um, somewhere between this bit, not past the budding scar. So I'm going to go down to about here and you want to put your knife down on top and roll around so that you're just making a cut in the bark and try to meet it up. I'm gonna go round once again, just rolling it round just to cut that outer bark. Hopefully you can see just here where I've done that. So the section from our mouthpiece to where we've cut, what we need to do now is use our hammer or a mallet to tap along it and this is going to separate the bark on the outside from the inside of the wood. So I'm just going to tap along it. You can use a fair bit of force and then I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to keep doing that all the way around. Once you've hit it with the hammer, if you give it a bit of a twist, you should be able to remove your bark from the top section in one piece. Once you've seen that it can be removed, you need to carefully slide it back on again, like so. And then we're gonna cut a V shape just here. So your V shape needs to be below the end of your mouthpiece. So I'm going to do mine about here, just here. So you're going to cut your V by cutting down into the wood and then pushing away. So you've got a nice deep V, like so. Now that we've got our deep V cut, the next thing we do is we carefully twist and remove our bark again. And you need to be really keep this nice and safe. Put that somewhere safe. Now, the next thing we're going to do is from the mouthpiece to the um, deep cut that we've made, we're going to do a thin slice off the top. And this will be where the air goes. So remember to cut away from you. Just doing a thin slice so I can see where I've cut. I haven't got to the end yet. Just take your time. So 
so that's just a thin slice off the end. The next thing we need to do is cut from here to about here and make quite a deep chamber. This needs to be the depth of your V cut here. So if you look at the side profile where I've cut, I've taken a thin layer from here to here and you can see I've made this deeper chamber that is in line with uh, the deepest part of my cut. Finally, take your piece of outer bark that you've looked after and carefully slide it back on to your whistle. and the hole should line up. Now it's just a case of giving it a blow and seeing if it works. So let's give it a go. Makes a little noise. I'm gonna have a go at adjusting it to see if I can get it louder. And with a little bit of adjusting, it's got louder. So what I've done is I've just made a little hole a little bit bigger down there, if you can see, and it's a bit louder. So we are so pleased that we've managed to get our hazel whistles to work. This can be done with other wood like sycamore or willow, um, but it does need to be done at this time of year. They are known as May whistles because they are used at the beginning of May when the sap is rising and you're able to remove the bark like this. Here we go. And you can experiment with making different sounds by making different lengths of your um, whistle, different size chambers and different length chambers and see what you can do. If you've enjoyed our videos, make sure you check out our YouTube channel, Forever Green Forest School. Subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get notifications when we upload new content. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.